Well, that was our message for today. <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> so good to have Jay here with us. Oh, what a treat. Every time he sings, he delivers a message, doesn't he? He really does, as I like to tell him. <laughs> Takes us to church. Really does. I am the place where God shows up. And you know that I saw that at that concert this week. If you were there, you know what I'm talking about. You might not have made that connection, but uh, it was truly an expression of God showing up by means of the talent and the gifts, the energy, the love, the enthusiasm, the fun, the laughs, the just everything, everything. And the reason I mentioned this, what did you say? Oh, oh God went in the food, no. God was in the food because all the calories, God took them away too, so we could just enjoy. You're right, Harvey. Every every level, God was showing up. Now, I mention that because of this. Every single Sunday, you hear in some way this reassuring message, the empowering message that you are a creation of the infinite out of itself, and that means you are God's expression of itself, and that means you have access to all of the aspects, the qualities of God to live your life full out. But that can still seem a little bit out there, a little bit distant when we try to bring it into our day-to-day, but you don't know what's on my to-do list for this week. You don't know what challenges I'm facing. You don't know all the uncertainties. Uh, Somehow that can seem like a really swell idea, but a little bit distanced. So that's why I'm making this connection again for you with, with the concert that we had. Or if you weren't there, think of this, com- this past week, some really fun time you had or loving time or uh, a time where you were feeling really alive or even when you weren't so much. But, you were, but think of your experiences of this past week and especially the ones where you, f- you were you. Or you experience someone else really being themselves. That was God showing up. It's no more complicated than that. It's no more complicated than that. And the beautiful thing about remembering that is that it's always there in us, just bubbling up with one intention for us to live with more aliveness, more vitality, more joy, being exactly who each of us is intended to be. So it isn't some obscure philosophical notion. It's right down there where the rubber meets the road, boots on the ground. I want you to really take that with you and know that. And so I love that, that you shared that song with us because I am the place where God shows up. You are the place where God shows up. And in my theme for this month, all around Halloween, you would wonder, well, what does that have to do with Halloween? Well, you'll see. You'll see the connection. As I told you on previous Sundays this month, Halloween is always a great time to be reminded of um, the, the, the other side of fear. You know, it's a time when we celebrate scary and spooky and um, uh, unknowns and all of that stuff that normally in, it would put us into a lather on any other day of the, of the month. But when it's Halloween time, it's fun, and the spookier and the scarier and the ickier, the better. And we laugh at it. And uh, that's really important because, remember, our fears, I mean, fear we encounter every single day and in some way, whether it's collectively or individually. And um, we need perspective. I need perspective on that. And this is certainly Halloween, and it is a 180, and that gives me some perspective. And so our, our sign, as you may have noticed when you come in, says just say boo to your fears. Just boo. Be gone. Last Sunday's message on that theme, then, was what is your scary story? And today we're taking another lesson from Halloween, which is going to be about um, the, the Halloween masks. You've got to have masks on Halloween, masks and costumes. I mean, that's just a basic ingredient. And they're scary, or they can be glamorous, or they can be funny, powerful, uh, Just anything. Imagination goes wild. If you go into a party store and you see all the masks, you know, I mean, it's it's just a time to let's just put a mask on and celebrate. 
And when we put a mask on, one of those masks, we kind of become that character for a while, don't we? We don't think anything of it. I mean, is this, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a witch or a ghost or a movie star or whatever, a Batman or uh, who, whoever the latest Spider-Man. Um, I'm that person when I have that mask on. And we, we just think, well, that, that's what a mask is for. Well, here's the thing. One of my colleagues several years ago said something in a talk that I have never forgotten, and I've really appreciated it. He summed it up this way. He said, Halloween is a rare time during which we wear our masks in front of us instead of, as we usually do, inside of us, inside our heads with all our built-up protective ways of relating to others and even to ourselves. Those inside masks, I'm going to repeat that part. He said, inside of us, inside our heads, with all of our built-up protective ways of relating to others or even to ourselves. Now, most of the time, we're unaware of those inside masks. So let's, let's think about it today. Let's explore that a little. I want, you, want to ask yourself three questions. What might be a mask that I'm wearing? Who am I behind that protective mask? And what is the fear that is keeping me behind that mask? And of course, what might be the, the payoff for removing that mask? So what are those inner masks? And why do we have them? I thought about this a lot, and I said, I thought basically we can, we can sum it up as this. They originate with the things we tell ourselves about ourselves. For example, we tell ourselves, if people knew the real me, they wouldn't respect me, or they wouldn't like me, or they wouldn't include me, or you can fill in the, bank, the blanks. I mean, if they really knew the real me. Another thing we tell ourselves is, if I acknowledge my real feelings... I'll be vulnerable to hurt, to criticism, to judgment, to ridicule, fill in the blanks, if I acknowledge my real feelings. Or if I let myself be fully myself, I might fail, or I might make big mistakes, or fail to live up to other people's expectations. We tell ourselves these things, and over time, because of that, we unwittingly create masks to protect us from what we perceive is a scary world, a scary life, lots of things to be afraid of. Those are protective, or so we think. And when we do that, see, we're not realizing that as the song says, I am the place where God shows up. Because if I remember that, I don't have to be so frightened and have all of these crazy messages going on inside that are creating defense mechanisms that I don't need. In the song it said, I am strong enough to bear the burdens that sometimes come living this thing called life. I am wise enough to make the right decisions. I am not alone and there's nothing I have to do on my own. I am the place where God shows up. So we have these masks inside, and it seems like they're a solution protecting us. So the question is, why are they a problem and not a solution? Well, three words, disconnect, distrust, and disempower. They disconnect us from ourselves gradually until we lose touch with who we really are. We're so busy listening to that little voice inside and then making up something so people will never guess, pretty soon we're disconnected from ourselves and we don't even know who we really are. And then they disconnect us from other people. I mean, people can sense it. You can sense it in people when there's, there's this something in between you and that real person. It may be subtle, it may be very obvious, you know, most of us don't run around saying, I'm going to be a phony. I mean, we don't, you know, I'm going to be a fake. We don't do that. But, but those masks, those that we've created inside, that persona that hides who I really am, 
that creates that disconnect, that distancing from other people. Think how you feel when you're at a party and someone you think you know, but they come up in that mask and, and there's, you, you recognize the voice in there, but, you, you know, it's not, it's, they got the mask on, so you don't recognize them. So it's kind of distancing, isn't it? It's fun, so you don't worry about it. But we do that when we have our inner masks in place. And there could be that little question when I'm encountering someone with a Halloween mask on, even. I could be saying, well, you're saying you who you are. But can I really trust that you are who you're saying you are? And I'm going to take that into our inner masks. They really do lead us to distrust. First of all, obviously not trusting ourselves. If I don't trust my own inner feelings and faults and whatever I perceive is in there, too, if I, if I have, feel like I have to cover them up, then I'm not trusting myself to be without that self-created mask. And if that's me, then how can I trust other people? If we can't trust myself, I'm not going to be as trusting of other people. And what happens then when I am distrusting of myself or someone else? It fosters weakness. It does not foster strength. It does not make me feel stronger. It's a sense of, of weakness, and uh, it's disempowering. So these inner masks are disconnecting. They foster distrust, and they're disempowering. They disempower us even more so because they block our awareness, our full awareness of the inner God, the inner guidance, the inner strength, the inner allness that we've been talking about. I am the place where God shows up. Well, I mean, I have that, that mask and that hiding of myself going on. I can't really be fully in touch with all that's there to support me and make it so I don't need that mask. And so what happens is we often find then that and it might be very subtle again. We find we're feeling lost and lonely and weary, distrusting and disconnected, disempowered, and not really knowing quite why. Not knowing why, because all the outer stuff seems fine. Here's some more clues of how to know if we're hiding behind a mask. If something isn't working, though, we try and try and try and try. Whether it's a relationship or work, creative expression, some project, whatever it is, if it's just gotten to the point of spinning our wheels, maybe we're not, maybe we need to go within and check out what's going on behind that mask. A uh, vague sense of emptiness, lack of purpose. That's a clue that I'm hiding behind something. A pervasive sense of insecurity. Because I said, you know, if we're, if we're, we're jamming the signals of spirit's guidance and, and support in us because we're, we're hiding behind that mask, then of course we're going to feel that insecure because it's a whole lot in the material world to say... <clears throat> You're crazy if you feel secure. There's just too much threat that's threatening. Maybe it's just a sense of a lack of confidence. Uh, again, because I don't really, I don't really believe in myself, so I'm behind this mask, which makes me look like I'm confident. But you know that feeling inside. And I'll tell you, all these things that I'm talking about, I have experienced in my life. And I probably will experience them some more. And the solution I found always begins with peeling away yet another layer of some mask I hadn't even realized I was hiding behind. Just getting even more up close and personal on, personally honest with myself. It's not easy. Believe me, it's not easy. But I will tell you this, it's very freeing. It's very freeing. So... How can, we, how can we remove these masks? How can we get behind them and gradually move them away, get rid of them, get, live beyond them? Well, I have three suggestions. And the first is sometimes you have to feel the pain. Sometimes you have to feel the pain. 
There's an article in Science of Mind magazine this month in the October issue by Tama Keeves, who is one of my favorite authors in current literature, current self-help books. She just, she just writes with such honesty and such candor. And her article is about this. And she says, life is the art of facing what you don't want on the way to creating what you do want, facing what's behind that mask. Here's some of what she said, and I invite you to if, get that magazine and read it, or if you, don't have the mag if you do have the magazine, read that article, because it's so, I, I think anyone could relate to what she talks about. <laughs> she was at a point in her life where she was caught in a vortex of inner pain and self-loathing, and I'm no good, and I'm desperation, and I'm a failure, and nothing's working out right. And she was trying and trying to use, she, she, she's a smart lady and very well-versed in self-actualization, so she was trying to work all her affirmations and positive thoughts to, you know, lift herself out of this. And it wasn't working. Wasn't working. Ever been there? It's okay. It happens. And, um, and that made her just more depressed and frustrated and just despising herself for being in pain and not being able to obliterate it. And all this came to a head while she was attending a meditation type of retreat. You know, one of those places where you, you, you kind of absolve all that or at least set it all aside and you ohm and you find peace and light and all of that. And, and she said, there were barefoot meditators walking by me and smiling serenely. And she said, I wanted to trip them as they passed by. She said, I tell you, I am not well. <laughs> But she was getting real about this. This was a time, I mean, and she has conducted these kinds of retreats, so she, she's not writing them off, but that's the place she was in. So at this retreat, she made an appointment with a healer. And she asked the healer, I'm sure she went into some of her story, and she said, finally, how do I deal with my inner pain? And she was hoping that the healer would say something, she said, to prop up my wounded, terrified self. Maybe, maybe something like, you're obviously a rock star who deserves better treatment. Or maybe um, she would give me a Sanskrit mantra to make my pain instantly disappear. You know, we, here, you're the guru. Please fix me. And the healer said something, as Tama says, she said something I was not expecting. She said, I guess there's nothing to do but feel the pain. Part of me wanted to say, come again. But the wise part of me, the one that instantly recognizes truth, understood. I didn't need to deny it or make it wrong or sweep it off my doorstep or scrub away its shadow. It was as though she had said, you've been running away from your truth, hiding behind your mask, for so long, you must be so weary. And hearing those words, she says, I didn't feel separate from my life anymore. I felt as though she reminded me of my real nature, a presence so beautiful and vast that it could sit with pain of any sort. Sometimes I think we underestimate God's spirit, the infinite, and we talk about how gloriously wonderful our life is when, we, when we're in the zone and we're, we're, we're living that life of, of spirit's expression. And we forget that it is bigger than any pain. It is bigger than any dark place we may go in our humanness. It can hold it all. What a reassuring thing. And so she said... I felt as though she reminded me of my real nature, my real nature being a presence so beautiful and so vast it could sit with pain of any sort. And she said, that pain then opened my heart to myself. It's always that way. She said, I feel the love of the infinite when I feel my own love. I mean, how can we make sense in, in, when you see it in writing? You say, well, of course. How could I... How can I be open to God's love for me when I can't love myself? And we forget the part about loving myself includes feeling the pain. 
So she said, I feel the love of the infinite when I feel my own love. When I stop running away from any part of myself, I am willing to feel my pain. I am willing to feel my life. So that's one way to approach peeling away the layers of the mask that might be, might be there in front of you, inside of you, but in front. Number two kind of goes right with that, and it's just be willing to be vulnerable. Be willing to be vulnerable, at least a little bit. Brene Brown, many of you know her writing and her speaking, and she that's one of the main things she talks about is vulnerability. Actually, she talks about it as the gift of vulnerability. And she said, if we want clarity, strength, or clarity in our purpose, or deeper and more meaningful spiritual lives, vulnerability is the path. Vulnerability is the source of courage, creativity, and connection. Maybe there's a tendency to think that uh, courage is the opposite of vulnerability. But she says, no. Vulnerability is the source of courage and of creativity and of connection. She goes on to say, it is the choice we make to risk showing up and being real, to let our true selves be seen. Vulnerability, and that's another way to take off that mask. Just ask yourself, am I, am I holding back because I'm afraid of being vulnerable? It's a risk, no question, but it's honest. And it opens us up to creativity and to possibility. And mostly, remember, the reason we're safe in being vulnerable and in our pain is because we are the place where God shows up. Again, the infinite is infinite. It is way, way, way larger, bigger, more pervasive, and yet more personal than any of the vulnerabilities or the pain that we may be hiding from. So then the third thing is a kind of a summation of that, and it is be true to yourself, not being true to yourself. Well, that's a whole, you know, how do I do that? To thine own self be true. Again, another swell idea, but how do I do that? So I would say question your shoulds. Just question your shoulds. Every time you're struggling with something especially, wait a minute. Who says I should that? Who says? I just got this in email this morning. I get these whimsical little poems or statements kind of from, from this uh, one of my favorite little poets. And here's, 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 here's what you can take with you. Just because there's a rule for something doesn't mean it's the only way to do it. It just means that if your way doesn't work, a lot of the people you know who follow all the rules will be more smug than usual. <laughs> Question your shoulds. That's one of the very easiest ways to be true to, to yourself. Wait a minute, who's saying I should do this? I want to share with you, in closing, from Thomas Troward, who was a brilliant New Thought writer in the late in the early 1900s, and um, and he says it in a rather lengthy way, and yet he nails it. It's about being yourself, about being true to yourself, and and about how we can do it because we're the place where God shows up. Here's what he says: I want to talk with you about the livingness there is in being yourself. For it surely must be easier to be oneself than to be something or somebody else. Yet, that is what so many are trying to do, he says. The self that, their own, that is their own is not good enough for them, and so they're always trying to go one better than what God has made them, with the consequent be, consequence being endless strain and struggle. There is a universal essence of life in and as each one of us. I'm the place, you know the rest. There is a universal essence of life in and as each of us, and all we have to do is allow it to rise to the surface. Just allow it to rise. We do not have to make it rise. It is a fountain of the essence of life 
ready to spring up in ourselves, inexhaustible and continuous. That's being true to ourselves and why we can trust being true to ourselves. And Dr. Ernest Holmes, the architect of our philosophy, said it in so many ways, but I like this. It's very short and sweet. He said, it is absolute, adequate, and available. All you have to do is be yourself. So what's the payoff for getting behind our masks and peeling away the layers? I'm going to say one word, freedom. 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 Freedom from, and then all of the things I listed as the clues that we know we're hiding behind them. You go back and think, oh, if I could just be free of that. So there is a beautiful payoff. And when we feel free, again, we're open to all that spirit has for us as us. We're open to so much more aliveness. So the thing to do is just get out of the way of all of that that wants to happen and wants to show up that is right behind that mask. So, funny thing, our beautiful Jay is going to anchor this with that song. Just get out of the way and let God do its thing. Namaste. Namaste.